It's your girl, Queen, reminding you guys to connect with us on patreon.com slash tmgfam, where you can get full exclusive access to all content, bonus videos, behind the scenes, vlogs, lives, and so much more. What's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Listen, man, we back with another one of these top 10 videos, man. You guys enjoy them. I love them. So we back with another one. This is the 10 strangest things to wash up on shore. 10 of the strangest things to wash up on shore. Now, I'm always of the belief that I have no idea what's all in that ocean, man, besides Megalodon. Like, I know Megalodon is out there, bro, but there's no telling what else is in that ocean that we haven't seen or what could wash up possibly. So I'm very interested to see in this video, is it gonna be some things that surprise us or maybe some typical things? I don't know, but it says strangest things, so I'm excited about it. So y'all get at me, let me know what y'all think. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button, man. Hit the subscribe button. And right next to that is the bell. Hit that too, all right? That being said, let's check out the video. Here we go. Some time at the beach can be a great way to spend an afternoon, but you have to take the bad with the good. And if you're a beachgoer, you know that plenty of junk can wash up on the shores. Sometimes, though, they're among the usual clots of seaweed and trash. The gentle tides will deposit something truly weird. If you've ever wondered what it would be like, Ooh, I just thought of something. What would be the strangest thing? What would be the craziest thing? A body. That would be, whew, but I'm pretty sure that's even, like, seen a lot from people. Bodies washed up on shore. Like to wander into a surreal comedy? Try putting yourself in the flip-flops of the people that have stumbled upon these finds. The strangest things to ever wash ashore. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is a favorite tourist destination, and its right. miles of beaches accommodate nearly 100,000 visitors a year. But seven-year-old Foster Frazier wasn't interested in lounging around the beach during his stay. Being an enormous fan of anything having to do with sharks, he was digging along a stream bed looking for teeth when he made the kind of find that would make a marine archaeologist green with envy. Young Foster dug up a five-inch tooth bigger than his fist, which once belonged to a 50-foot terror of the seas, the Megalodon shark, which has been extinct for two and a half years. Everybody keeps saying they're extinct. They are not extinct, man. I know. I'm just telling you, man. We just haven't seen them. They ain't surfaced yet, but they out there, bro. Look at that size of that tooth, bro. It swallowed his hand. It had to come from something not of this world million years. Foster's parents at first took the tooth to be a sand-covered rock, but further inspection left them speechless, as Foster had stumbled across a specimen that often eludes even professional deep-sea fossil hunters. Even more strangely, the boy had previously told his parents that he would one day find such a tooth, and that God would tell him where to find it. So either Foster made a really lucky guess, or he has a direct line to the Almighty. The coasts of the Pacific Northwest are no strangers to large driftwood, often called drift logs, and powerful winds combine with high tides to relocate them from hilltops to beaches on a regular basis. But in 2010, a specimen washed ashore that was just a little bit bigger than your average drift log, an absolute monster of a tree of the type regularly found deep in the forest. The driftwood wasn't measured, but it dwarfs this six foot- Bro, that's, that just goes to show you how powerful <laughs> water can be, man. No human, no, like nothing else is moving something that size but water, bro. That's that's insane. Tall woman and would have towered perhaps 200 feet in the air when upright. The type of perfect storm required to rip this beast from the ground, float it down a swollen river, and wash it up on the shore is tough to imagine. But you may have heard that the Northwest has some wacky weather patterns. Well, here's the ridiculously huge proof. For centuries, the giant squid was nothing but a myth. They were first described over 2,000 years ago, and they probably contributed to the ancient legend of the Kraken, which was common among mariners. Specimens began to be recovered in the 1800s, but the first modern living specimen was captured in 2004, and strandings on beaches are very uncommon. So residents of the Spanish village of Cantabria were understandably shocked to find one of the 30-foot monsters washed up on their local beach one day in the fall of 2013. Strangely, underwater photographer Enrique Talledo happened to be nearby and managed to get some pictures of the type that he probably never thought he'd take on dry land. The 400-pound blob was moved to the town's maritime museum, where it can fascinate and freak out the locals for years to come. Sheesh! Bro, you see how huge that was? That, come on, man. And I'm always of the belief if we see something, there's something probably out there bigger. You know what I'm saying? That's bigger than that. I always think like that. I don't know why. If I find something that is already huge, I'm like, in my mind, 
is something out there even bigger, man. So I'm not playing around in that water, man. No, no. A British couple having a stroll along Middleton Sands Beach made a very unusual, smelly, and profitable discovery one day in April 2016. At first glance, it could be mistaken for a strange whitish rock, but Gary and Angela Williams recognized it at once for what it was, a huge lump of ambergris, which is essentially whale vomit. Gary described the smell as a cross between squid and farmyard manure, but oddly enough, the substance is coveted in the perfume industry, and it's very expensive. It Are you serious? Did I just hear that? The cologne that Queen wears, I mean, not cologne, but the perfume is made up of whale vomit. I, I don't think I heard that, that correct. Let me go back. Which is essentially whale vomit. He said the cologne that you ladies wear is made up of whale vomit. Interesting. Gary described the smell as a cross between squid and farmyard manure, but oddly enough, the substance is coveted in the perfume industry, and it's very expensive. It wow. originates in the digestive tracts of sperm whales, who eject it into the sea when they're sick. Once allowed to dry and age, its distinctive foul odor changes to more of an earthy scent, lending to its use in perfumes and colognes. The lump found by the Williams was estimated to be worth up to 50,000 pounds, or about 70,000 American dollars. A pretty stinky way to come up on a huge payday, but we doubt they're complaining. Kelly Gravel of Wales says her family was fascinated by the object that washed up during their visit to the beach in 2015. The large round metal ball was covered top to bottom in barnacles, and they what took it that? to be a buoy of the kind that washes up in the area with some frequency. They took pictures of their kids playing around with the thing, posted a few shots to social media, and forgot about it, until a friend alerted them to a Facebook post explaining what it really was. Pembroke County Park had posted to its official account that the buoy was actually a United States military mine, a World War II era explosive which could very well still be active. The news came as a complete shock to the Gravel family, whose children had literally been playing with a bomb, and they went to watch when the mine was detonated in a controlled explosion by the local bomb squad. Whoa. It certainly could have turned out a lot worse. It's Whoa, that would have scared the life out of me, man. I would need therapy after that. My kids were playing around with a bomb. Like, that's why I, when you see stuff, man, you, you can't identify it. Stay away from it, because you have no idea. That could have been very, very, like, detrimental, man. That was in it. They were playing with a bomb, essentially. Just taking pictures, flicking it up, everything. Ah, I get it. Ah, making poses with it. The whole time of that thing could have went off. That's crazy. Especially considering the fact that the authorities didn't discover and identify the object until five days after the gravel's discovery. Wow. Giant squids are one thing, but an Aberdeen couple think that they found a sea monster carcass of a non-invertebrate variety during a walk along the beach in 2011. The 30-foot animal had an intact tail, skull, and teeth, and while it certainly had a prehistoric look to it, nobody is sure exactly what it was to this day. Some have suggested that it was the partially decayed carcass of a pilot whale, while others have gone the complete opposite route and declared that it must have been a plesiosaur, a long-extinct prehistoric flippered sea reptile, which had long been suspected of having an active... Keyword long extinct so that, that that's letting you know that they think stuff is extinct when it's actually not man the ocean is however big man you know what i'm saying it's it's just no telling there's no possible way we can know everything that's in it so to, to label something extinct i just don't i don't i don't agree with that man we just ain't seen it colony in Scotland's Loch Ness. The truth may be somewhere in between. After all, it's perfectly plausible that there are a number of large sea animals that science simply hasn't discovered yet, but it definitely looks like the type of animal you'd rather encounter dead on the beach than alive in the ocean. Exactly. You probably don't associate the frozen Russian province of Siberia with beaches, but there are plenty, only not the kind you'd want to visit to go sunbathing. It's strange to see sandy beaches covered with ice and snow, but an occurrence that took place near a village by the Gulf of Ob ratcheted the strange meter up to an 11. These are snowballs, thousands and thousands of them, all packed in neatly along an 11-mile stretch of beach, and they weren't made by the villagers for the annual all-village snowball fight. How? According to the Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute, they were formed naturally out of slush, which formed into frozen chunks, which were then blown along the coastline by strong winds. The result, perfectly rolled snowballs, ranging in diameter from about the size of a tennis ball to whoppers three feet across. Nobody is sure how often the perfect conditions for this phenomenon to occur. See, people kill me, man. They always trying to figure out something, man. Some stuff is just unexplainable. Just let it be. It just is what it is. That's it.
come about, but it can't be very often. One village resident said that even the old timers who had lived there all of their lives had never seen it before. Storm Angus wreaked havoc on the UK in late 2016, blowing through with 80 mile per hour gusts and causing devastating flooding. Of course, the UK is accustomed to such rough wintertime weather, but nobody can remember ever before Whoa. having seen an entire local starfish population suddenly relocated to the beach. Apparently, Whoa. Angus caused waves strong enough that the creatures were dislodged from the seabed in vast numbers, then left stranded on South Sea Beach when the tide went out. Some local residents spent an afternoon trying to save as many as they could, carrying Yo. them in buckets back to the sea, but became discouraged when more just kept washing up. Thousands upon thousands of the critters died where they lay, and while Angus was responsible for only minimal human casualties, users on Twitter were referring to the situation on South Sea Beach as the Starfish Massacre. Yo, at that point in time, it's, it's time to move. It's time to take your family and move, relocate. That's what that's a sign of. In the English town of Norfolk in early 2017, officials made an equally alarming and slightly more illegal discovery. On two separate beaches within a short distance of each other, an absolutely absurd amount of pure uncut cocaine washed ashore in several unassuming looking duffel bags. The first stash was discovered by an anonymous member of the public who notified authorities, and the cops recovered the second shortly thereafter. All in all, the haul amounted to a staggering 360 kilos, with an estimated street value of 50 million pounds, or roughly 70 million American dollars. It's likely to have been ditched by air or seafaring smugglers. And while officials have been unable to determine where it came from or who it was intended for, one helpfully remarked that the public beat. <laughs> That's a life decision you gotta make right there with yourself. That's an internal decision. You gotta sit right there. You gotta look at that and be like, holy. Is this a sign? Is this a. It, it, what, what do I do with this? And they said it was pure, uncut, pure. With a street value of 50 million, 70 million in the US. <sighs> oh my, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> like, what do you do? Oh man, yeah, man. I'd have ran. I'd have feel like I'm getting set up. I'd have been like, this is a joke. They trying to set me up. This is entrapment. Like, I don't want no parts of it. That's what my mind would have thought. Each was probably not its intended destination. It's safe to say that if you came across a brightly colored eight-foot Lego man during your morning stroll on the beach, you'd probably first check to make sure that nobody had slipped anything into your coffee. But that's exactly what happened to Jeff Heineman, a Sarasota, Florida resident in 2011. Its front bore the printed message, No Real Than You Are, which seems to be missing a word or two. And on the back were the words Ego Leonard in the number eight. Baffled residents crowded around to take pictures with a hundred-pound fiberglass sculpture, but they weren't baffled for long. Ego Leonard is a Dutch artist who is known for pulling stunts just like this in the past in his native Holland, and it didn't take authorities long to crack the extremely silly case. They briefly detained the Lego man until Mr. Leonard came forward to claim him, and it took him all of about eight months to make another public appearance, washed up on the shore of L.A. County's Topanga Beach. Apparently, he just can't <laughs> resist catching a wave. <laughs> yeah. Yo, man, super, super fire joint, man. Ten strange things. I think the strangest thing to me was that bomb the kids were playing with. Um, that's just insane, man. You you never know. And to think that was a, ended up being a bomb when some, somebody probably thought it was like a buoy or something or anything like that. That was just insane for it to turn out to be a bomb. And they detonated it. So that just would make it even more real for me to be like, oh, my God. Thank oh, man, just thank. I'm th so thankful that it didn't, you know what I mean, detonate when my kids were around it. I would be, like, just over super overprotective now. I probably would never go back to a beach, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I'll get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all think. Leave a like, share the video, stick around and stay tuned, man. It's your boy L. To the next reaction, I'm out. Peace, y'all. Stay solid. Hey.